yes, Excel and Outlook and Word are still in there, but this is all part of Microsoft 365. This is the platform. This is the ecosystem. All of these applications integrate together on a common platform with shared identity, shared security, and shared data. Because it's a cohesive platform that's fully integrated, and all of these applications are aware of the context and the and the, the data right across the board, um, it allows for a level of integration that you just can't get through ad hoc third-party applications that you've put together. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. We're not going to go into all of these. That's just too many to do on um, in a webinar like this, but this is kind of an idea of, of what we're getting into and what the platform is. What does it mean to transform your organization digitally, um, particularly in relation to the modern work? It's not just about changing the technology about where you put your files and things like that. It's not just about replacing a file server. It's about changing your organization. And it really comes down to the changing nature of the work that our staffs and employees and volunteers of organizations need to do today. Um, hybrid work, work from home, work from field, from the field, all of this is now um, through cellular connected to technologies and wireless products, um, putting the right device in the right user's hand with the right data when they need it can really empower their productivity um, and improve an organization's outcomes. It can be a huge benefit for customers uh, when organizations have that level of integration and collaboration amongst their staff. Um, and because it maintains security right across all of the applications, you can know that that device and those da that data is secure. The opportunity for your organization here really comes from all of from the combination of all of these things that we just talked about. Um, and it can le lead your organization to be a level above where it is today uh, and above the competition if that's your business model. So we're gonna talk a lot about different applications and different technologies and things like that. One of the big things that we do wanna highlight is just how data storage works in Microsoft 365. There's two main places where these applications store information. The first one, which we're not going to touch base on too much today, um, is in an application called Exchange. This used to be your on-premise file server, maybe 10 years, or email server, maybe 10 years ago. Um, and that stores all of your email, your contacts, your calendars, maybe some tasks and things like that. Almost everything else in SharePoint or in Microsoft 365 that's not in your Outlook application, everything else is in SharePoint. So SharePoint serves as the data repository um, for everything from Microsoft Teams to OneDrive to um, SharePoint itself. Uh, it is a powerful data storage application that can be a website. It has database applications. You can build apps in it, um, SharePoint lists, so much more. Uh, so it's really important to understand that SharePoint is not just a replacement of a file server. It's a completely different way to store data that can replace a file server at its core. The um, Microsoft Teams is a relatively new application as far as the Office suite goes, being just a few years old. Again, just like SharePoint is not just a file server, Teams is not just a chatting application. It's a collaboration platform and it can be used as kind of the single interface or the single pane of glass as Microsoft refers to it as. Um, for all of Microsoft 365, you can do an incredibly huge amount of work um, and build a workflow for your organization entirely in Microsoft Teams itself. You can develop custom solutions for it, um, and it, ad it adapts to change very well. Um, and again, all of the security at the Microsoft 365 level filters down to everything that you do inside of Microsoft Teams. So file permissions or list permissions um, all propagate throughout the entire system. 
there is so much more that you can do with teams as well. Organizations use it for project management. You can use it for customer service, um, chat applications, maybe on your website. Um, and what's really important is because it's backed by SharePoint, all of the information that's in there is reused over and over and over again. So rather than creating a copy of that Excel file that you're collaborating with on other people, it's the same Excel file, whether you're in Teams, you're in a desktop application, or you're on your mobile phone, it's all the same or it's all the same data at the same time. And real-time collaboration amongst all of those people on those devices is possible. So the SharePoint and Teams integration, as we've talked, is very deep. Anytime you have files and um, information on Teams, that information is stored in SharePoint. Uh, it can be accessed directly from SharePoint or through your OneDrive application <coughs> um, or collaborated on in meetings, um, so on and so forth. Teams connected sites, um, every single Microsoft team inside of the Teams application has a SharePoint site associated with it. So this is why it's very important when you're doing, considering a migration from on-premise infrastructure to SharePoint, that this isn't treated just simply like a move of a file server to like say a Dropbox application or something like that. It's really, it changes the work because Teams is about people, whereas a traditional file server was more about the data. Um, and so what we really try and do with organizations when we do a SharePoint and Teams implementation or migration from a file server is we work with their stakeholders um, to design out a new workflow that is about the people and less about the information and data itself. To touch base on a couple more examples of where um, Teams acts as a single pane of glass for additional servers and or services. Um, Planner is an excellent example of this. So the Planner application can be viewed just in the website itself, um, and it's pretty pretty powerful there. But again, it becomes more powerful when it's backed by Teams. It can form Kanban boards. The files that are in your Planner application again are backed by SharePoint inside of that Microsoft team. The checklists and, th and sensitivity labels for compliance, all of these things are all contextually aware across your entire organization. So if you've got a file for your business planning um, that's labeled as an internal sensitive document, your compliance rules inside of the rest of Microsoft 365 understand how sensitive that data is and may prevent it from being emailed or things like that. So again, a standalone application, part of Microsoft 365, is enhanced by being used inside of Microsoft Teams. Another great example of this is the bookings application. A lot of people, you know, that back and forth on, hey, are you available Thursday or Friday between 12 and 6? All of that can be handled by bookings. Every single user that has a Microsoft 365 mailbox has a bookings link. You don't even need to set anything up. It's right there in your calendar. You can give that to away to people um, who can externally and securely view what your availability would look like based on some rules you can configure. As far as an organizational um, bookings application goes, there's a lot of opportunity here to uh, create custom workflows um, where somebody coming into your bookings application, say if you're a service organization, perhaps maybe a hair salon, uh, you might offer a service for a haircut. Any one of five people on your staff can be chosen or randomly assigned. Um, or if you have more tailored special services, like for example, here at KTI, our bookings app is about a meeting with me, but there's different kinds of meetings that you can have including um, additional functionality like filling out checklists, um, seeing pricing, um, so on and so forth. So this is another example of where maybe an organization might go to a third party application like Calendly um, to be able to do this where it's built into Microsoft 365 and very much more aware of um, 
all of the rest of the data and information that's in there in, in Microsoft 365. So it aligns with your calendar, uh, it aligns with your contacts lists, and even some integrations into services like LinkedIn. Teams Rooms is another really interesting example of the expansion of um, the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. Teams Rooms are physical rooms, boardrooms, flex rooms, things like that. And it's a level up again from just simply having a computer in a boardroom with maybe a webcam hosted over a TV that's signed in as a boardroom user. In that particular case, Teams or the meeting itself, the, the room doesn't know what it is. It thinks it's just another participant in the meeting. Um, whereas in a Microsoft Teams room, the room is aware of what it is. It knows that it's a room. Special cameras and speakers um, allow for that boardroom-like experience that is a step up from just simply having a laptop or a computer in a boardroom presenting. Uh, they do require special hardware that is approved by Microsoft for use in a Teams room. One of the most empowered groups of people inside of the Microsoft Modern Workplace is your first line workers. First line workers are just that. They're the people who interact with your clients and um, staff. They're your production workers. Um, you know, that forklift operator running around a shop floor um, or someone in shipping and receiving or a volunteer working out in the field um, with uh, clients. First line workers being empowered by Microsoft um, Teams and three, the 365 ecosystem really levels up the communication and collaboration. When somebody in the back office is able to collaborate in real time with somebody, say, on a shipping dock um, or out in the field, the level of customer service and the level of quality of information um, in, and the speed of the information increases dramatically. So whether that's just simply a small handheld device that's using um, Microsoft Teams to do chat, it can be those SharePoint applications that we talked about being in a mobile device in a frontline worker's hand, um, perhaps uh, scheduling, things like that can all happen. It's a very low cost um, option for an employee that doesn't need the whole traditional application or computer stack that still gets them into, the, into an organization's data systems. One of the other things I want to really highlight is that Microsoft has some really exceptional grants for nonprofits and non-government organizations, um, including some completely free services. Uh, they have additional services at drastically reduced costs. Um, the barrier to entry for nonprofits into the Microsoft 365 platform is incredibly low, and in some cases is even free after the initial deployment. So we've talked a little bit about what Microsoft 365 is today. We wanted to give you just kind of a glimpse of two really big things that are coming that are going to really level up the Microsoft 365 platform even more so than it is today. So we're just going to go through two product demos for two products called Microsoft Loop. Um, and then the next one I'll introduce in a second. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
So Microsoft Loop is as much as a game changer as Teams was when it came out a few years ago as integrating everything in Microsoft 365, Loop takes that to the next level. So it's a pegboard, it's a collaboration platform, it's a more data uh, creation, even more so than Teams is today, um, to the point where if you copied and pasted information out of an email into a Loop board that you're collaborating on, that text that knows that it came out of an email, if you've got something scheduled in your calendar that's related to information that's in a Loop collaboration board, your calendar is aware of what's in there, the people that it worked on with it, um, the, that data is there for you at your fingertips. Um, I'm really excited for Loop. If you've ever used Microsoft OneNote, this is like an extreme upgrade to OneNote, and it's coming out later this year, and we're really excited for it. The next really big one that's coming, um, again, probably later this year, maybe early next year, uh, everybody, of course, is big right now on AI. And a lot of organizations, they think, how is AI really going to help me in my business? Maybe it'll, you know, if I go to a website and tell it something, maybe it's going to help me write an email or something like that. But how do I really use this every single day, all day? And Microsoft's got a pretty good idea as to what they think it's going to look like. So everybody's, of course, heard of things like ChatGPT um, or the Google, Google AI's product. Um, there's the Bing chat. Microsoft has invested extremely heavily into AI, and they're bringing it into Microsoft 365, into the applications. Um, we've seen demos of it. It works, and it's incredible. And we're, again, really excited to see what's coming um, or when that hits customers' hands probably early next year. Okay, so um, of course, everybody always asks, well, if you're doing Microsoft 365, there's a lot of Microsoft partners out there. Why Kirkhoff Technologies? We have a long history of being a Microsoft partner. We understand these systems incredibly well, and we work with clients on a human level for implementation. If you're going to move to SharePoint, we don't run just simply load up the file migration utility and hit sync and then tell you that your stuff's now in teams we work with you and your organization we work with stakeholders to change your business and transform it using these technologies to empower people and that's our goal is to help people do their work in a more efficient and more pleasant and better way If you want a customized demonstration, um, 
to be able to go over what the Microsoft Modern Work platform has. It, maybe you're already in there, part of it. Maybe you're working through a migration of some sort already, and you're interested in kind of what's the next steps. If you're completely new or if you're on a different platform, maybe you're still running out of a personal Gmail account because you're a small organization. Um, talk to us. There's lots of different options and lots of different things that we can do for you. Um, and you can just simply reach out to us on our website um, or at our email sales at kirkoftech.ca. All right. Um, do we have any questions so far? Yes, we do. We have a question that says, we heard about Microsoft Access as a program that could help us with the inventory management. Is this also an app that's included in Microsoft 365 or is it not? Excellent question. Excellent question. I'm glad you asked. So um, two parts to that. Yes, but don't do it. Um, Access is currently part of the Microsoft 365 platform. It is only for desktop um, on Windows, so it doesn't take advantage of things like um, tablets or Mac OS or even the web-based stuff. It is a traditional Windows desktop application that is included with most SKUs of Microsoft 365. It is becoming end of life probably has about another 18 to 24 months left on it. Organizations are migrating off of it because it's not going to be a long-term product. Inventory management and that kind of data um, has more appropriate places inside of Microsoft 365, such as SharePoint lists, Power Apps, and other databases that are more modern and capable um, than Access would be. So yes, Access is currently a part of the system, but if you're looking at building out a new tool right now, um, there's better tools to use than, my, um, than Access. And we can absolutely, um, the options are, are endless, um, but absolutely reach out to us. Uh, we can start a conversation about that, absolutely. Yep, perfect. We don't have any other questions for now, but if you have any, please feel free to put them in the chat. But now I will ask you a question is about that we often get from our client. A question is about end user training. How does it look? OK, um, as I noted earlier, we don't just simply kind of. We don't just simply do the technical work without the involvement of people. All of these kinds of solutions that we've talked about today, um, as noted, they're all driven about empowering people and you can't empower people that don't understand what they're doing with the platforms that you've implemented. Uh, end user training is a huge part of what we do um, and takes up you know, almost as much of a migration project as the actual technical work and the planning work itself. Um, so absolutely. If you're going into a project like this, expect a good amount of end user training. It is required um, for the successful implementation of these new digital tools. Awesome, thank you for the answer. Uh, we don't have any more questions, so I think that we can just move ahead and don't waste anybody's time. For sure, for sure. All right, um, what's coming up next? Our next webinar is gonna be at the end of August. Um, it is going to be talking about the end of life of server 2012. There's still time, but barely, like barely. Um, and caveat, if you know you have a problem, don't wait until August 30th to talk to us. Um, server 2012, if you're still using this on premise, uh, it needs to go away by the end of October. And we're going to do a webinar talking about what your options are as a small business or an enterprise. Um, in order to become future compliant. All right, and again, don't hesitate to reach out um, and talk to us if you've got any other questions um, or would like a personalized demonstration of what this could look like tailored towards your organization. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.